Uh, that it is, and the answers we've got uh, every day with the Brain Trust. The Brain Trust, uh, Terry Keyes and Professor Plum will be back next hour, uh, ready to answer more of your questions. So if you're on hold, hang on or call back either one. 877-PLANNER is the number here in the studio. Boomersbraintrust.com online if you missed any of our past programs. Uh, reminding you, you can find the podcast, subscribe to the audio and the video on demand right there. It's free. You can see and hear it today. Boomersbraintrust.com. That's boomersbraintrust.com. Wow, you say that with such authority. I heard again. I heard it on some uh, uh, an announcer that I actually respect pretty well. Once he, he, he gives a website, that's www. Oh, oh that. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, you know, don't don't show your age that much, okay? And the guys like my age. Uh, anyway. All right. That's yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so we boomers are are uh, most likely falling victim, I think, to many of the issues which come as we age. All right. Lack of sleep is probably one of them. But uh, getting enough shot eye, sh shot eye, <laughs> he isn't the only reason we're tired. We tend to mispronounce words. It's, it's strange, isn't it? Uh, but there are little habits we have, and I notice this too, that, 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 that just kind of sap energy during the day. Mm -hmm. And really, they can exhaust you. And I said this yesterday, as we continue this today, it exhausts you physically, it exhausts you mentally. And hey, guess what, folks? we got a whole lot of living left to do. Now, yesterday, uh, as I recall, we talked about some of the habits that, that can make it tough to get through the day. And Dinah Smith's here with uh, a few more to avoid, yeah. I think. Some good habits, right? Yeah, some good it ones. might help us feel a little more ready to take on the day. Yeah, and you know, the thing here isn't so much sleeplessness, it's just the yeah. fact that certain things we do yeah. tend to just, as you say, sap that energy. And, and yesterday we talked about, you know, don't avoid the exercise and, and make sure you're hydrated and, and make sure you uh, fuel up properly and check your iron and gauge how much sugar you're taking yeah, in. And stress. All kinds of stuff, right? So Watch, today yeah. we're going to give you a few more. Uh, the first one, get a little organized. Are you looking at me when you say that? Well, because you know me. your desk is a little different from mine, Johnny yeah. Dean. But here's the thing. A cluttered desk can, can really mentally exhaust you because it restricts your ability to focus and it limits your brain's ability to process information. At the end of each day, it's a great idea if you can just kind of go through and make sure your work and personal items are organized and put away. It's, it's amazing when you get organized it's just one fewer thing mm -hmm. you're going to be thinking about when you're trying to get to sleep. And this way you can begin your day in a positive way the next morning. So if your office needs some major reorganizing, just avoid becoming uh, totally overwhelmed. Just take it one step at a time. Start by tidying up what you can see and then move through your desk, go through the cabinet drawers, you know, bit by bit. And, and it's amazing how much better you're going to feel. Here's another thing to do or not do. Don't work when you're on vacation. When you go on vacation, a lot of people are guilty of not allowing themselves to decompress. Uh, if you're checking your email when you're supposed to be relaxing by the pool or in the sand, it's going to put you at risk for burnout. Are, are you point. looking at me again? I am when looking you're doing at this, you. Diana? Will you stop that? Yeah, that's yeah. me. You have to unplug, you have yeah. to allow yourself the ability to truly unwind so that your mind and body can rejuvenate. Uh, you're going to return to the office stronger. You're going to be in much better shape because you've given your mind that break. Uh, that regular work schedule is what drags us down. And if you give yourself the break, it'll allow you to become much more creative, much more productive, very effective once you return. So you actually, what do you do? So so you're at work, you know, for a certain number of years. And then what do you do? You, you, you leave the work. Yeah. And then you don't show up for like a period of time? See, this concept is completely new to Johnny Dean because yeah. he has no idea what it means to that's take a, a, a vacation odd. or sick day. No, I don't know I what that is. I kid you not. Yeah. So you... So you, you, you are you, the poster you, child for You overwork. vacate. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so stupid. <laughs> it is so stupid, people. Come on. What is wrong with people like us? Really, I, I know. mean Well, that. but you know, you get into a pattern and we're used to it. And we are creatures of habit. Sure. Uh, you know, yeah. but... D try it when you really unplug, really unplug. Just get away from it mm -hmm. and don't get caught up in it because, you know, all that stress and all that anxiety and all those thoughts about work are going to follow you that way. Here's another one. Don't use alcohol to sleep. Now, we boomers are products of our upbringings, all right? Many of us do like our cocktails. But uh, while a nightcap sounds like a great way to unwind before falling asleep, it can very easily backfire. And it's not because I'm preaching to you, all right? This is science. Alcohol initially depresses the central nervous system. It produces a sedative effect. We go, we know that, right? Yes. But uh, it ultimately sabotages sleep maintenance because it causes a rebound as the alcohol becomes metabolized. And this creates this abrupt surge 
in the adrenaline system. Really? Yeah. So this is why you're more likely, if you've had a drink before bed, to wake up in the middle of the night. You're wide awake. And you think, why am I wide awake? I had a nice glass of wine or two. If you do like a drink in the evening, <laughs> try to stop your alcohol consumption about three to four hours before you're hitting the bed, okay? Gives your body a little chance to, you know. Okay, I suppose that's good Resurge okay. and then go back down, all right? Uh, here's another one, and Ravak had mentioned this too. Oh yeah, Ravak I know what this Hoffman. one is. Yes, uh, the uh, and the, the iPads and all that. Yep. Yeah, before yeah. Avoid the technology. If you're channeling your inner teenager before bed, <laughs> it's not going to help. But I'm talking about checking, checking email, email on your oh, phone, man. everything else before you switch off the light. And, and it's 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 science. The glaring light of the tablet or the smartphone or the computer oh. screen or even your cell phone is going to throw off your body's natural circadian rhythm. It suppresses melatonin. That's the hormone that we need to help regulate our sleep and our wake cycles. And sensitivity to that digital glow of technology, it obviously is going to vary from person to person. Not everyone's going to react the same way. But in general, it's just a really good idea to avoid all the technology for a couple of hours before you knock off for bed. If you absolutely cannot avoid checking your device before your head hits the pillow, pillow, just keep this in mind. If you keep it about 14 inches away from your face, <laughs> try to keep it as far away as possible and it may be inches. a little better. Wow. Do you like how I do that? That's, do, that, yeah, yeah, that's how that's far I have to hold things out there. so that I can read That's the thing. Easily. Most boomers are used to that. You know, they're putting the book right on, they're holding it by their feet <laughs> so they can actually, you know, look at this way. I, you know, the whole check the email thing, I'm going to hear about this tonight. I know I'm going to hear about this. Because you do it? I do it. It's, it's just out of habit. It is it. just, you know, before I put the phone into the charger, mm -hmm. it's quick check of the emails, and normally it's a quick reply. I know. Okay, here's another one. If you're like John and me, you like your caffeine, but don't rely on it. Beginning your day with a Java jolt, or in John's case, a <laughs> jolt of Diet Mountain Dew, yeah, it's no big deal. Forget coffee, yeah. Okay. But, and studies actually show that up to uh, three daily cups of coffee or caffeine is actually not too bad for you. It might even be good for you. But if you use caffeine improperly, you're going to mess up your whole sleep-wake cycle because caffeine uh, blocks uh, this byproduct of active cells that drives you to sleep as it accumulates. So uh, they had this study, I think it was in the uh, Journal of Clinical Sleep yes, Medicine, yeah. and uh, brought up the fact that uh, it was, consuming, it was, it was consuming caffeine... Six, it was, it was, was it six hours yeah, before... six hours before uh, bedtime. Uh, will affect your sleep. Right, right. So cut yourself off. I cut myself off at nine. Not your case. Also, you well, want to train I, your body to sleep. So we'll talk about that another day. But, uh, you know, if you go out and party all weekend and then expect to get back into the regular Monday through Friday sleep thing, ain't going to happen. So try to do sort oh, of the please. same hours. Partying all, uh, partying all weekend, <laughs> you're boomers. All right, let's start acting our age. What do you say? We're oh, boomers. No, oh, come no. on. I'm kidding. I kid because I love. More of the Boomer's Brain Trust is just ahead. Professor Plum and the Brain Trust returns after this.